The Great North Run is one of Tyneside's most iconic events. One of the few times you'll see the Tyne Ridge not full of cars, the red arrows in the sky, and the Centra motorway being closed. Now, I missed the Great North Run this year, but I still want to take part in all of it, to recognise all the good this event does. I also want to show how our urban environment looks when these roads aren't closed off for runners. Most of the time, the route to the Great North Run is not nice to run along, but I'm going to do it anyway, and treat myself to a dip in the North Sea and a pint. So join me to see if I make it. So I'm at the edge of the town moor right now. I'm with my lovely girlfriend Rose, and I run all the way to South Shields following the route of the Great North Run. So uh, I'm just across the uh, time bridge behind me. It's now officially in Gateshead and just waiting for the lights to change and across again. Heading towards the Gateshead flyover now. This whole area of town, it's absolutely horrible to run around. So it's coming past uh, Gateshead Stadium now. Still following this main road. It's normally if you run down the main road, it's but we're stuck in the old foot past the side. This part of the city is nothing but car garages. So you're gonna buy a car, head out from Gateshead towards South Shields. Quick wall break and then we're back and moving. Now you're probably wondering why. I didn't just do the normal Great North Run, which was done a few weeks back. And the answer to that is two pies. First of all, I missed the sign up date and I, I should have signed up earlier and really done that. But the other part of the answer really falls back to over a year ago, I was hospitalized for a, a heart related issue. And whilst I was never a long distance runner before, I, I quite enjoyed running a fair bit. And ever since then, I've, I've really stopped running on anything in particular. So the whole reason for this is to prove to myself, really, of what I can still achieve and that I'm not held back by anything. Right, I'm currently at about five miles to South Shields. So that's the uh, Sunderland Metro line behind me. Still run alongside the steel carriageway. So I've stopped here to use the facilities. So we're about exactly halfway now on the edge of, uh, I don't know where. Back on the route. Had a quick <laughs> About uh, 6k to go, and I've made a wrong turn. But it's fine, we found a toilet. <laughs> Nothing but uh, dual carriageways the whole way down. But yeah, still about 5k to go. This last section's gonna push, but you can finally see the sea dead ahead. Yeah, it's such a good sight. <laughs> right. I'm on the home straight now, right by the edge of the coast. Woo! Oh How'd you feel? That last section was so long. So that was my first ever half marathon and 
all things considered, I was stopping at a lot of junctions. The Tyne Bridge Junction alone took about five minutes to change. So my time of two hours and 20 minutes wasn't actually that bad. Uh, the overall thing took me a bit longer, including if you include like stopping for drink breaks and water breaks. So I think the total movement time or the elapsed time on Strava was about three hours. But with all the excuses, I'm saying 220. I know I said at the start of the video that I would treat myself to a dip in the North Sea and a pint. And I completely forgot that the whole metro system was being upgraded. So what actually ended up happening was I had a lay down on South Shields Beach for about five, 10 minutes, had some lunch. I said not eating, it was about three. Had to walk all the way to South Shields Ferry Terminal, get the ferry to North Shields, walk up the embankment to North Shields uh, Metro Station, get the Metro back. So by all this point, I wasn't too keen for a pint in South Shields. So I ended up going for a pint at a Rosie's Bar in town. But what you really see when you run the Great North Run and not on the actual day, is obviously any large scale running event needs to be on wide roads in order to support the amount of people that run down it. And obviously that's why they choose dual carriageways and it's a mostly dual carriageway route to the coast. But overall the whole environment around these dual carriageways is just not very people friendly. You're running on quite a narrow, probably 1.5 meter wide pavement and just cars running, chugging past all the time.